on this episode of Still Loading, Mario! Mario! That was, that was awful. <laughs> Hello, everyone, and welcome to this new episode of Still Loading. Thank you all once again for tuning in. I hope you're having a great day. So this week's episode, what I am talking about is Luigi's Mansion. And for this week, I brought my friend Vin on. Vin, how are you doing today? Good. How are you doing, man? Now, for those who remember, Vin was on the episode, or on the episode, sorry, the podcast once before for DuckTales back when we were, I was doing the 40 for 40 series. Uh, so it's been a while. It's been a while uh, since you've been on. So yeah. uh what what have you been playing lately? What have you been up to in your gaming life since then? Um, I mean, I guess it was like two years, so I yeah, guess. Yeah, it's been a while. <laughs> um, oh I've been playing uh, the remaster Link's Awakening. Um, I'm pretty much at the end of that, but I, for some reason I just don't want to beat it. And I don't know why. <laughs> well, it's because it's such a f- and, good game. And... Um, I actually started playing Animal Crossing on the GameCube again. Yeah, yeah. Which is it's it's funny that you're you're playing Luigi's Mansion because I like busted out my my GameCube and I was like, you know what, I really want to mess around like with Animal Crossing. So I started playing Animal Crossing again, um, playing Battlefield Five mm-hmm. and Team Fortress because of all the Blizzard stuff going on. <laughs> There's a lot of like Team Fortress, uh, pro Team Fortress stuff happening. Yeah, I I was o- actually always Team Fortress Team. Team Fortress because this is kind of a weird this is a dumb weird opinion but like when everyone when Overwatch came out yeah. and everyone was like obsessed with it I'm like Team Fortress was there first well the thing is is like I know it's different it's completely different well, the, but. the thing is is like I used to play oh my god like I had let me see I can I can see how many hours I have on Team Fortress I played <laughs> the ever living hell out of Team Fortress and there was a point where I just kind of got the thing with me and Team, and this is like uh, such a tangent at the beginning no, of, the, at, of the podcast. It's, well, I started off with just seeing what you were, what you've been playing lately. We'll we'll dive into Luigi's Mansion. Don't worry. Yeah. Um. So. Yeah, I have a, a th- one thousand seven hundred and three hours on record <laughs> of Team Fortress. So uh, I played so much of it, and their updates after a while were so frustrating mm-hmm. with like microtransactions and stuff like that. Um, I think a lot of people just got kind of sick of Team Fortress and okay. because there was no professional back then. There was no professional um, league or support from Valve to help the TF2 community yeah. like get an actual league. A lot of it was just like community run stuff. Um, a lot of people jump shipped over to Overwatch because Blizzard was throwing so much money into it for the events and all that. OK, stuff. I did not know that. actually. Um, but yeah, like recently, like for the meme I went back to Team Fortress because of everything happening, you know, yeah, with, with Blizzard uh, yeah. and all that stuff. Um, so I was like, oh, let me boot up Team Team Fortress and see like just what the community's doing. And it, it the Halloween event's going on right now, so it's actually a really fun time to get back into it because they have all the Halloween community maps and uh, it just like it's a lot of nostalgia. I mean, it's uh, right now it's just a lot of nostalgia for me from like GameCube TF2 from like years and years ago and uh, what else? That's pretty much it. I'm just waiting for Luigi's Mansion to come out. End of the month, mm-hmm. the, the Luigi's Mansion three yeah. with uh, Gooigi, yeah. the <laughs> champion of the people, and um, <laughs> just like I'm just getting stuff for the Switch. Uh, money's a little tight, so I've had to skip some titles. I wanted to get Demon X Machina. I heard that was good. I wanted to. I've been playing a little bit of Astral Chain. I got like halfway through Astral Chain. I kind of that also I heard was like getting a lot of good reviews. It's, I, the same. I money's been tight too for me, so I haven't really been able to get anything. Yeah, anything new. There's a lot coming out for the Switch that I want, but I've I've been having to get real selective, like mm. the uh, collection of mana, all those games, and uh, there was like something else. There's like a couple a couple Japanese titles that I need to look into too. That I need to, that we aren't getting like an English translation. And all I've really been playing on mine, I've just been playing WoW Classic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah you're a while I've, I've been hooked on it. Oh man, a lot but, of my a lot of my old guild mates were asking if I was going to go back. I said absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> it's. A lot better than retail. I'm not gonna. I actually logged into retail for the first time in a while because, like, you don't need to buy a separate game for WoW Classic. You it's all the same account. It's all the same account, which is nice. It's not like an. It's it's not like it's an expansion. Mm -hmm. So 
they they put it on there and I, I was like, all right, well, I haven't played retail in forever. Let me download the full retail version since I already own it anyway and see what's different. Right. And holy shit, I don't know what to do anymore. <laughs> it's so it's so different from the last time I played, which I is mean, like four years ago. I haven't played since Cataclysm launch. That's and, about the same for me. And all uh, I, I played Pandaria. All I experienced was like the first zone and I hated it. It was like the underwater because I played the Horde, mm-hmm. and it was like the underwater area, and I absolutely hated it. And then my internet got cut off, and I was like, you know what? That's fine. No, not worth it. I have it. no interest in this game. I, I ended up liking their their questing styles in Ka- after Kata because they like kind of figured out how to make it a little bit more like varied and unique. Yeah. But then they took away all the fun individualistic stuff of all the different classes, the things that would make all the classes different. They all oh, feel the same now. Okay. But anyway, so we are here today, like I said before, to talk about Luigi's Mansion. And Luigi's Mansion, for those who remember it, uh, is a game that came out for the GameCube back on November 18th, 2001. Actually, we're pretty close to the 18th anniversary of that. I wasn't planning on that, but it kind of worked out that way. (laughs) Um, So it came out on, like I said, Nintendo GameCube on November 18th, 2001. The director of the game was Hideki Kono and produced by Shigeru Miyamoto, Takashi Tezuka. Um, there's different people who, different directors and producers for the 3DS version, but we're only talking about the GameCube one right now. Uh, composers is Kazumi Totaka and Shinobu Tanaka. And yes, yeah, so that's just a little bit of a rundown. Uh, obviously, people know who Shigeru Miyamoto is. Not a lot of people might know who Takashi Tezuka is. Those who kind of follow video game history might, but he's the guy. He was the director of Super Mario World. Mm. He was. He's been like pretty much the Mario guy since uh, since Miyamoto, mm. or he was the Mario guy since Miyamoto kind of got promoted up and out. Yeah, um, I'm trying to think. I just want to make sure that I was correct with that he's been working on a lot like he was the assistant director for the original super mario brothers to, hmm. uh takashi tezuka was uh he did he was the assistant director for mario 64 he was the director i was right for super mario world link to the past link's awakening and yoshi's island so he was like the head guy for all of those games so he's it's got a pedigree yeah um so yeah luigi's mansion uh, I guess to kind of start off with what I want to talk about this is I remember there was a little bit of backlash when this game first came out because the first Mario game, usually Nintendo systems came with a Mario game. Mm-hmm. You know, you had Super Mario Brothers for the NES. You had Super Mario World for the Super Nintendo. You had Mario 64 for the N64. But for the GameCube, the launch Mario game wasn't a Mario game. It was Luigi. And I remember, I remember that caused a little bit of a backlash in the community. And then when they find, when everyone finally got their Mario game, it was Sunshine, which is a, a lot, little bit more loved now. But on release, it was not liked. <laughs> I feel like I feel like that's just the overall experience of the GameCube is that it got so much pushback from so many people, and now years later, everybody's like, "Oh yeah, that was a good system." There's. I, I like the GameCube. I think my only beef with it is that there's not a lot of good games, but the games that are good are, like, uh, fantastic. Like, I'm talking about quantity, not quality. And that doesn't well, that's not indicative of the system. It's not their fault. Well, yeah, I mean, that was, that was really the era that began the trend of Nintendo doesn't have any third-party support. That was, mm-hmm. like, where that argument kind of started from because of um, the whole transition into CDs. I mean, they, they had uh, Resident Evil 4, but that even that's no longer an well, exclusive, well, technically. Yeah, I mean... That went to PS2 later on. I mean, on. if we're, if we're going to talk about the GameCube, I, I mean, my GameCube library is fairly big. Yeah. Um, I mean, I would say second to my switch library which is huge because of how many games come out for the switch um but well, I, nintendo has third party support now the oh, switch yeah, has been huge for sure and i think like going back to this what i was saying is like you know everybody was like oh well the gamecube's like it's not that great it's not that powerful this that and the other but like it had so many good games and like excluding first party games i I have a very a pretty big collection of yeah. like, at least like third party games. Like Capcom like supported it pretty well. Beautiful Joe was on the GameCube, both, right? Yeah, I've both, been meaning to play those. I haven't played them. They're yet, great games. Know. Both Beautiful Joes are on there. I mean, they're no longer exclusives. Yeah, but they well, they were exclusive at the time. At the time. Of, so yeah. like, I still count Resident Evil Four and Beautiful Joe for that because that was 
an exclusive thing for a while. But then also, the GameCube had the Resident Evil Zero. It had all. The, it had Resident Evil One remake. It had all of them. It had zero through four. Um, I mean, and uh, there was like a bunch. Of, they had the Tales games, which I see you have. Mm-hmm. Symphonia. Um, yeah, which was an amazing game. And there was uh. There's a game called Freedom Fighters that was really good. It had some really good games. I'm gonna have to check some of this out. Also, like even like first, we'll party, have to do an obscure GameCube games episode. That would be Cubivore would be great for that. You have, have you ever played Cubivore? No, I've never oh even heard God. of it. Cubivore was. Oh man. We'll we'll we'll, 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 we'll do we'll do an episode for <laughs> yeah. it. So Luigi's Mansion, uh, like I said, like I said, it was originally like not because the game was bad, but it was originally not even panned by critics. It's just, it was it wasn't not, what people expected. it wasn't what people expected. Yeah. They wanted a Mario game and they kind of got one, but not really. Uh, and they, what they got was Luigi's mansion, which I actually just beat in two days. Cause for in preparation for this episode, it is a short game, but a very, very good game. And that's also coming from someone who doesn't have any nostalgia tied to this. Mm-hmm. I found myself like, cause it's hard for me now to play a game more than like an hour or yeah. two hours before I get like antsy and I have to like my legs get a little stiff. I have to stretch out because right. I'm not young anymore. Uh, but uh, I actually found myself just sitting and I played this all morning in preparation for this recording. You it know, was what, so good. You know what I think it is like because I played this. I didn't play this when I was younger. Mm-hmm. Like um, I really didn't start expanding my library until. So this was generation f- four of the consoles. I think so. I think I th- I actually I because th- it's like NES, SNES, N sixty four, GameCube. I think really people started counting since NES era. Right? No, so the actual first generation. It's weird. It's it's a lot more than you expect. Yeah, I think the Atari twenty six hundred is the second generation. Believe it or really? not, really? Because I I'm gonna look it up while we're talking. I mean, quick. I might be wrong, but I feel like a majority of people, at least our age, don't consider anything before the NES to be like the start of the. I consider generational. The, I consider counts. at least the Atari twenty six hundred. Right. Um. So okay, the first generation was nineteen seventy two to seventy seven, and that was pretty much the big one for that was the Magnavox Odyssey, which isn't very popular. Not right. a lot of people even. Know, I don't even know any specifics about I've that never console. Even heard of it? Uh, I've I've heard of it. It was the first. Was it the first cartridge based console? It. I think it might have been. Um, I'd have to research that. So anyone who's mad at me for not knowing that off the top of my head, sorry. Yeah. Uh, Atari 2600 was the second generation, 76 through 83. Mm. NES was 83 through 87. 83 only because it originally came out in Japan in 83. Right. right. Um, Super Nintendo slash Genesis is 87 through 93. Genesis was pretty, was a couple years, it was at least a year or two before this, NES, right. which is weird for me to think about. Fifth generation is PS1, N64, and Saturn. Uh, sixth generation is Dreamcast, PS2, GameCube, and Xbox. So this is technically the sixth the generation. The sixth generation, which is so weird to think, because yeah. like you said, you would think it's the third, because fourth. NES, or fourth, sorry, yeah. NES, Super Nintendo. But we had two generations before that. Two okay. generations before that. Well, um, I well, so going back to that point is, I didn't start expanding my GameCube library until the 360 and the PlayStation 3 and the Wii were out. Mm-hmm. So I worked at GameStop at the time and I had a GameCube and I was like, I had had a 360 and I was at that point, GameCube was on its way out mm-hmm. and everything was on sale. So I was just buying up games. Um, Luigi's Mansion being one of them. And so I didn't play it until, geez, I want to say 2010, 2011. So like nine years after it yeah, came out. Yeah. And I think I had the same experience kind of that you had it's like when you were when you play it you sit down and you just kind of get in you end up like kind of like getting enveloped in it Mm -hmm. and i think it's because of the way it's not even like just like the gameplay it's the overall atmosphere of the game i think is really what pulls you in the the art design the art direction in general is really nice in this the uh graphics are pretty appealing yeah Uh, they look great even now they look pretty good. I'm not going to lie. I think the thing that uh, they talk about this on another podcast I listen to called Retronauts, the sound design is really, really, really good in this great. game. Yeah. Um, spe- uh, specifically, they have like kind of like the same theme. If you notice it, they have the same theme in the entire game, like going yeah. through the entire mansion. Yeah. It's the whole like. Dun- Da, 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 yeah, it's the da, Luigi's da. Mansion theme. Yeah. But the thing is, is that it never feels old because depending on what's happening, mm. they it 
it changes how it's being played. So like if it's in a happy, if like you've um, like freed a zone of ghosts, if you wiped out all the ghosts in an area, then Luigi's whistling the tune. Mm-hmm. If it's in a scary ghost, he's kind of like whimpering it. He's yeah. Like, hey. <laughs> almost like peter from family Guy. yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> i uh yeah and i mean the is the the theme itself like i i still find myself just kind of humming it to myself every once in a while it's a it's a catchy i think it's something that like nintendo the nin, nintendo sound designers are really good at is just the these overall themes that really stick with you and don't become so like they're obvious but they're not like they don't like hit you in the face. Like you notice them because they get stuck in your head. And like, but even they like, never get old. That's right. the thing. They don't go stale. Like even like like Breath of the Wild. Like Breath of the Wild sound design was pretty minimum. Like they did like a real minimalistic stuff. But like if you think about it, like it had like really good sound design with when you're riding the horse, the way like the music kind of starts to pick up and mm-hmm. like where you're at and the combat and all that. And I think that's something that Nintendo really, um, their talent in who they hire to do that is is amazing. And, that's i would agree yeah i think i think like with luigi's mansion like yeah there's not really much as far as like music goes but the music that is here is great and that does again lead to the overall atmosphere of the game it's interesting because it's there's not a lot of variety of music but there's a lot of variety in how the music is being portrayed not portrayed but uh, relayed across to the player Mm -hmm. um there's a couple other cool moments if since we're talking about sound uh there's a specific room where there's one of the ghosts where she's playing the piano and the way you need to get her attention is by activating all the other instruments in the room so there's three bongos there is a harp there's a xylophone and there's like this weird saxophone looking thing Mm -hmm. and each one of them is playing a different part of the mario theme so Mm -hmm. the first time i heard it i I first hit the harp i was like okay that's cool it's the mario theme but it's it's like in a different key this is weird um and then i hit the the drums and i'm like okay am i supposed to like activate all of these yeah so it was just the harp and the drums going i'm like all right i'm it's kind of cool but then i hit the xylophone and then i realized it was supposed to be a harmony between the xylophone and the harp Mm -hmm. and then you hit the like the like the saxophone looking thing and the whole thing comes in and there's also a bass that you that you have to hit mm-hmm. so you get like the full you get the full gambit it's a really cool little thing and you can go into that room at any time and just listen to the mario theme by turning on all the different <laughs> instruments it's kind of like a fun little easter egg yeah which is actually part of the game at the same time they right. kind of turned an easter egg into a main part of the game yeah which was cool uh and then like i said the fact that they just the way that the the music shifts depending on what's happening in the game i thought was just so well done yeah and it's and it's funny to think that they were doing that like back then because that's something that i never really like noticed on like until like breath of the wild going back to breath of the wild Mm -hmm. like the way that they kind of blend the overworld music when there is overworld music into combat into you know um like if you go into like the 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 stables and stuff like that Mm -hmm. the way the music all kind of blends together but the fact that they were doing it back then with the limited hardware and all that stuff, like, I mean, obviously the stuff's a lot better now, but, like, everybody back then was always saying, like, oh, the GameCube is underpowered and doesn't really do anything amazing. Yeah. But, like, you know what I mean? Like, they were doing all these cool things, and so, I don't know, it, it's it's really cool to think about that, like, they have these talented people doing all these things. One of the other things I liked about it, too, was we kind of, we touched on the graphics a little bit, is... I'm glad you can skip it, but the the animation of every time his hands going for the doorknob and yeah. it's like it's like shaking. It's cool because it shows so much personality with Luigi mm. of just like just the slight shake and then it rotates. Um, that's definitely you can tell that was a very tech demo y type of thing mm-hmm. because why would you do that every, like for every new door except to show off like what it could do up close type of well, thing? Well, I think that's also kind of. Um in line with what Capcom was doing with Resident Evil, it was to mask the loading for the next area. But the thing is, once you... But you only ever have to do that once. You don't do it for every single oh, door. Oh, really? So it's only on doors that you're unlocking for the first time? I don't think I've ever skipped them. I think I just... Every time I went through a new room, I would watch that. I don't know. Yeah. I you don't can, know. When you can skip the key animations. It's only for the key. So hmm. it's not It's not a loading thing. I'm sure they have, like, clever... Like, the, the, the stairwells are definitely, like, their versions of loading zones. Yeah. Uh, which is... They're very short loading zones, so you don't even notice it. Yeah. 
or they just i mean the mansion's not that big i would not be surprised if they just have the whole thing loaded you know what you and know just like lower poly versions of it that they just up as you get closer and farther well, away you know what i was thinking like about like in, th- in preparation like just thinking about the game like trying to remember it it's kind of like nintendo's resident evil yeah because you know with with all the doors and all the different zones because it you can't really call it like a metroid game you know no because I mean? it's well no yeah it it's weird because it has the potential to be, but it's not. So the, yeah. the reason, so a Metroid game, the whole idea is like go like exploration, going backtracking through this, yeah, go backtracking. There's a lot of backtracking, but you don't. There's no. You don't need to go back through rooms that you've already completed before, right. except for the hallways and the necessary paths to go where yeah. you're going. It's not like. You need to unlock something to then yeah. go back. Yeah. So it, that's why that's why it's like when I was thinking about it, I was like, I was like, maybe like Nintendo made this specifically to try to convince Capcom to put Resident Evil on the GameCube. I could. That might be. I mean, I, that's, that's just a cool that, theory. That's just a theory. But like, I mean, because then if you look at the library, they ended up having five Resident, Resident Evil, Evil games. games. I that I might. I think I'm supporting that theory because that's <laughs> that's. Because what is it? And I never played the original Resident Evil, but they have all the animations for like the doors, opening opening, doors yeah. right? And that yeah. was their that was their loading. That was how they masked their loading uh, of the of the next rooms or of the wings and stuff like that. That's so, smart. Um, even in the remakes, you know, that weren't on like the PlayStation One, they still have that loading mm-hmm. animation because um, it's become iconic now. Yeah, that's right. And so I don't know. I was just thinking about that. I think. Um, as far as the graphics go, just the lighting is really great too in this game. I I do notice now with like 2019 eyes to see some seams with it. Like the shadows are just other like flat text, like flat planes of textures that they kind of mm. mask a little bit. Uh, it's it's a little weird, but it, it, overall it's cool because the lightning strikes. The lightning, and you'll yeah. randomly get like uh, the shadows. There is. Actually, I talked to you about this off mic. Uh, mm. Last week, I did the top 10 urban video game urban legends and creepypastas and whatnot. Yeah. One of the runner-ups for it, there, there's a theory in this game that Luigi's actually dead the whole time because if you walk into the one room... It's a fan theory. It's, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I, I think I've heard of it. You walk into the one room, and if you stand at a spot when lightning strikes, it looks like Luigi's hanging himself. Oh, yeah. It's, like, really fucking dark. I, I didn't see it when I was playing it. I also wasn't really looking for it. Right. But uh, because I like Luigi, I don't want him dead. Uh, but yeah, it's it's the lighting in this is like really well done. It, overall, just it's it's a it's definitely a very because it, it, it's shorter too. You can tell it's a very tech demo y type of game. Right. That's not to take anything away from it. Right. Um. In fact, the fact that they took like kind of a tech demo y type of thing and turned it into something that's actually like a legitimate game and not just for well, yeah, I mean for you know, like show. I think with. Nintendo, they had a lot to prove with like the GameCube because everybody was saying it was an underpowered system, like off the bat. And the N64 didn't sell as well as right. the other competitors when that came out, so they kind of needed a bounce back. Unfortunately, the GameCube didn't sell as well mm-hmm. as the competitors again, but obviously they've they're, they're doing fine. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, uh, so I think like with this game, they really needed to show what you could do from a technical level, like. The with the lighting, with the physics, the physics in this game, like back then, like the cloth physics, like that stuff was rough to do. Um, the actually those cloth, the cloth physics look pretty good. Like yeah. there's a there's a there's a couple moments when I'm like, okay, that's kind of bad there, but like yeah, great yeah. for 2001. Yeah, and then like the uh, the transparent the tra- translucency of the ghosts and like the way the ghosts are textured and the way they look, like the overall feel of the ghosts, like look. Another funny thing that they do, sorry to cut yeah. you off there, yeah. was the reflections in the mirrors. The way they do it mm-hmm. is kind of odd. Mm-hmm. For small mirrors, I think it's legit actually reflecting it because it, it doesn't, it's, I don't know how to describe it. It looks like it's actually reflecting, like they actually were able to get the, that to work. Yeah. But for the large mirrors, it's a matte texture, which still like reacts to what you're doing. But you can tell it's not actually like reflective, if that makes sense. Like yeah. it just looks like a matte painting that r- just repeats, like like calls back what you do. It's really like I'll have to I'll, I can boot it up and show it to you. But like it's really interesting because it like so the mirrors in the bathroom actually look like mirrors. Like you see a little bit of like a like shimmer, a sheen. like yeah. a sheen to it. Yeah. In 
other rooms, there'll be a giant mirror and there's no sheen to it. So it just looks like a flat texture. But when you walk in front of it, you'll see Luigi mm. in the quote unquote mirror. And when you turn around, it does everything that you do. Mm-hmm. So I don't know if that's oh, like, so like the so you're saying like the specular effect is is turned turned down on that. Yeah. I, I mean guess. I don't the the way I was thinking is did they just program it to like re like to just like I don't know, I don't know how they did it. it just well, it looks it looks really off. It doesn't. It looks that's probably the worst graphical graphical effect. Yeah, excuse me, graphical effect they do. But it it seems to me like the, like looking at it, I'm trying to picture how you would do it behind the scenes, and it seems like this really cool technical workaround for mm-hmm. not being able to actually have reflective textures. What it could be, and like I haven't done 3D modeling in a very long time or texturing, but from what I remember, like if you were to do anything with a reflective surface that was supposed to be glass. Mm-hmm. It took up a lot of processing power. Like it, when you go to, when you went to go render it and do all this stuff, if anything, the only thing I could think of that would be like a, a quick shortcut is they would have done a camera that um is showing that viewpoint mm-hmm. and then that area is essentially ref- showing what that camera is seeing. I could see that. So then. it could be just another camera and then they like that that plane the the mirror plane yeah has um is told to just sh- display sure, what that that, sees. that would make sense actually but that's that's the only way that I can think of it and then again I don't really have a lot of experience in game engines so I don't know what game engines were capable back at that time yeah but. that would, that actually makes sense because like the mirror is like it doesn't you doesn't really shift perspective all that much which would make sense with the whole st- like stationary camera type of thing yeah um but no so graphically and aud- audibly there we go that's yeah. what i was looking for the game is super impressive yeah. uh i guess what i want to talk about next is though the game design like the gameplay and design itself mm-hmm. holy shit is this fun like i it's this is what a ghostbusters game has been trying to be forever <laughs> I heard, though I did hear the one on the Wii was really good, but I I did not personally play it. I think they just remade that too. Did, yeah, for, so, for like the Xbox. And the I think so. I heard it was really good, but I I didn't personally play. It, but like you know, there was Ghostbusters games on the NES mm-hmm. and Super Nintendo. I, I don't know if there was on the Super Nintendo, but definitely on the NES. Right. Um, and they never really could capture what the movie was. This would have been the closest thing to a Ghostbusters type of moop game, I guess, at that time. But I, I wonder like how Nintendo even came to this decision of kind of like a semi Ghostbuster type uh, game because prior to this, it's I mean, like booze have been in the Mario games, but like mm-hmm. they never really were like that. Um, they were never really a focal point. They were always just kind of there as like. Or secondary. like they had like uh, I mean the closest thing they had was in Mario sixty four where you have like the boo house yeah but the, that's, the, yeah but they're still secondary compared to the whole game like mm-hmm. it's not like a main part of the yeah oh it's it's main in the sense where you can get like the um, stars the stars right. out of it but it's not like it's not the focal point exactly I mean and then and that's why like I would love to God I would love to have like seen the the pitch for this game or at least like the conversation as to like how this game even. So came, I came did actually look up a little bit okay. on this. Um, I don't know anything about the pitch of it, but they did. This was supposed to be originally on the N64. Really? Uh huh. It was going to be very different though. They, uh-huh. it was going to be a Mario centered game. Um, and it was just like, they, I didn't, they didn't really go into much more details of like what, how it progressed from there. But Basically, it seemed like they had the idea for this game, for not this specific game, but for a Mario Universe game type of thing. Mm-hmm. And once they transitioned it over to the GameCube, it just kind of took shape as Luigi's Mansion. Right. Um, one of the things that apparently Shigeru Miyamoto wanted, though, the reason the reason it took shape on the N64 is that Shigeru Miyamoto wanted a, a more adult like Mario game because he was like he supposedly cited specifically the peace signs that Mario gives every time he would complete a level in like Super Mario World. Yeah. Um and he didn't want to be quite as cute and cuddly. He wanted something a little bit more darker. Hmm. Uh so that started on the N64. Obviously we know it never came to fruition and this is the outcome of that darker Mario game that right. was the idea. But funnily enough you still have the peace signs in the game. Every time Luigi gets a co- uh, key, excuse me, he right, gives right. a peace sign. I think that's just like a Japanese centric type uh, thing yeah. where they like do the peace sign for for celebration. But that's interesting. That I mean, in, and I guess like in that same vein, like the GameCube did kind of take on a 
more adult, quote unquote. Yeah, I mean, they, tone with games because, like, they it, going back to Resident Evil, they had um, Eternal Darkness on there. Mm-hmm. Oh, I want to play that game so bad. You know, that's another pretty good game. They had they had like more. They were a little bit more adult toned. Um, so and that again, maybe that's why they they focused on this in the beginning. I mean, if you really think about it, even look at like Me- like Metroid Prime is a very yeah. adult style. I mean, it's adult. It's darker. It's darker. It's yeah. and it's not to say that like because I, I hate the term when people say it's adult. That means it has to be violent or it has to be sexual or it has to be swearing. Right. Adult. A more adult game can just be like less cute. Like it's it'll be less cute. It's going to be more just not realistic i don't know it's hard to describe it's just a different tone they completely Mm. shift the tone from happy to more just kind of like almost somber yeah yeah that's definitely a good that's definitely a good vibe to i would say for metroid because like metro you're alone by like and like the the overall um sound design gives you that isolation Mm -hmm. type feeling so yeah i can see that um and actually even in luigi's mansion there was a couple i was when i was playing this morning uh there was times when he was just humming the song that, hmm, hmm, mm-hmm. hmm, hmm. but you don't hear. It's very quiet. Like the music was so low, and all you could hear was his footsteps. I'm like, you're just alone in this mansion. Yeah. Now, granted, there's toads periodically strewn throughout, and there's um, yeah, uh, egad, e- egad every once in a while, every yeah. once in a while. Which I actually realized you can't go back out to see him once you leave him. It seems I don't know. I I didn't I didn't really to tr- go back to the lab. Yeah. Can you go back to the lab once you're in the mansion? Unless he like, I think you can. I don't remember. I th- doesn't he get like digitized? I might be. I might be confusing it with Dark Moon now. No, he doesn't get digitized. Um, I might be confusing that with Dark Moon. I now. still need to play. I have Dark Moon actually. It's somewhere. I can. I can see it. Dark Moon is a much less memorable game, unfortunately. Yeah. Um. Not a bad game. Just a lot. I. I literally. The only thing with Dark Moon is the different locations are the only thing that like stick out mm-hmm. with. And, and that's, and I think that was like with me, like dark moon and, and kind of like talking about Luigi's mansion three, I'm excited that everything is kind of in one place. Mm-hmm. Was dark moon all over the place. Dark moon had like four or five different levels and each one f- was different themed. The in three, from what we've seen so far, it's one hotel Okay. But there's every so many floors is like a different. Oh theme. yeah, I heard it's a and I. It so I don't know hotel. how I don't know how I feel about that. I think they're calling back to an uh to. They're kind of giving themselves a little reference. You ever heard of the game Hotel Mario? Uh, for the CDI. Yes, <laughs> I want to say. So uh, quick, I might be thinking of Mario's missing. So quick history lesson. Um, Nintendo was trying to make a disc-based add-on for the Super Nintendo, and I promise this ties back to Luigi's Mansion 3. Um, it was trying to make a disc-based add-on for the Super Nintendo. They originally partnered with Sony, um, and then they realized that Sony had a be- was getting the better end of the deal with that, so then they decided, without telling Sony, to partner with Philips. Mm. Um, and so both deals ended up falling through i might do a whole episode on the whole thing like bit by bit not just this brief overview um both deals ended up falling through sony went on to create the playstation uh so the playstation is somehow bizarrely thanked to uh, thank we thank the playstation for existing to nintendo which is kind of weird to think about created their own created their own biggest competitor yeah um and then the phillips thing also fell through and created what's called a cdi uh not a great console uh it was more of a multimedia type of thing but because of the deal with it phillips had the the rights to create nintendo pro licensed or nintendo character games for their console that with the nintendo never even touched so there's three zelda games right i know the cdi yeah i know about that and then there is hotel mario which is just like uh it's it's a 2D from what I saw. It's a 2D game. I might try to do it for Mario Month one time mm. uh, for in, in next July if I can get a copy of it and get a CDI as well. Right. Uh, but they're a little pricey. Um, but you uh, you basically from what I remember, it's like door like you're running this hotel and people are coming out of the rooms and you have to close them back in and stuff like that. I don't know. It's super weird. Yeah. It so odd. it it kind like I wonder if they're like kind of like harkening back to 
their hotel mo- to hotel mo- like as a reference as a reference type po- of thing. I mean, possibly, which but would I be don't, really cool. But I don't know. I, I mean, that'd be oh, weird. I would love that. That if would they did be that. weird for them to reference a game that they never made. Yes, you but it I mean? also is such a Nintendo thing to do because there's even in um there's games that like I mean there's references to stuff on the NES that technically Nintendo never made. Oh. but obviously because it was on the NES, it's so it it's weird because it's Nintendo characters so it's still theirs but yeah. they just didn't touch it i mean and nintendo doesn't make all of their first party games either well that's true they do um, have like you a, know like, camelot or next level games like capcom also did some zelda games yeah the the um minish cap and and oracle of ages the oracles, and seasons, yep. Right? Yep, yep. but um okay so what we're, we were talking about <laughs> i lost my train of thought oh, now. so I, I was saying how with um two and three my, the only i guess um concern i have with three is the overall design of because like i think that was what i liked so much about one is that everything not ever that everything was uniform but it was in one location one location it felt, every, everything felt the continuity felt um good with two i wasn't crazy about like jumping around so much because it didn't really feel like a luigi's mansion game from what the GameCube had set up as far as expectation. Yeah. The game wasn't bad. It was fine. Mechanically, it was fine. They added, like, new features. Um, I might actually play that next. Um, you, I, I mean, I would I would recommend it, especially since you just beat uh, the one on the GameCube so you can see what those comparisons are. Um, but my, my only thing was, from what we've seen, mechanically, 3 looks good. I just... It feels like that they're, they're kind of doing, like, the Mario Odyssey thing with Luigi's Mansion now, where they're doing, like, different levels of the hotel are going to be like, oh, well, here's a desert and here's like a pirate thing. That'd be kind of weird. I mean, I know they're probably not going to do desert and pirate, but like... No, no, they show that. They show that, yeah. really? Yeah, in, in, in the later... In the latest weird. Trailers. I mean, I'm sure they're going to show... They're, they're going to like build it into the story as to why that happens. Yeah. I mean, it's a it's a haunted mansion. You know I mean? Yeah. They, they can do, do whatever, whatever they, they want. want with it. Yeah. So there's supernatural stuff in yeah. it. Um, so what I want to talk about now is the actual ghosts. Now I know you haven't played it for a little bit. A long time. Uh, I just, you know, played it in the last two days, but um, even then I won't remember everything. But the one, what I loved about how they approached this game is that the, a lot of the gameplay, a lot of the, you have boss fights. There's only actually like three or four boss fights in the entire game. But, all of the individual ghosts are kind of like mini, mini bosses. bosses, yeah. And so you have just regular run of the mill ghosts that have different like characteristics of how you're supposed to catch them. Some of them like hug you and they shake you and you have to break free. Others just kind of are they don't move but they just drop down from the ceiling. And you have to take them out. Uh, and you generally you the way you have to stun a ghost before you can suck it up with the vacuum or what is it the poltergeist three thousand yeah. Uh, you f- you stun them with a flashlight. It exposes their heart, which lets you suck them up into the vacuum. So, and each ghost is a little bit different. Um, but then you have like these official, like not official, but like these special ghosts. Like, there's a lot of like just regular ones throughout the str- like thrown out, strewn throughout the mansion. But there is uh, special ones that you kind of have to that you have to take or catch because they will give you keys to get into other parts of the mansion they will also turn into paintings for you so that way you can kind of fill out this portrait room that uh uh i guess we even talk we didn't even talk about who egad was uh we'll we'll talk about that in a second (laughs) um so but you have to they get turned into portraits and get put into this like portrait room um and that's pretty much how you go through the game you go through you have to Actually, we need. Oh my god! I think, I think we should start from the beginning with how, <laughs> like, what's happening to Luigi in this. We've talked so much about just like a bunch of different things. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I mean, do you want to? So, I mean, like, do you want to start off with that, or do you just want to talk about? Because I think, like, I think, like, talking about these like mini bosses, like, that's really, I think, what was the big thing with everybody is like each mini boss was kind of like its own puzzle in that's, a way. That's what I was going to describe it as. It's because the the challenge of defeating the boss wasn't in like a technical platforming sense. The final boss kind of was. Um but it was more just how do you expose that ghost's heart? Mm-hmm. That is that's the puzzle of it, mm-hmm. which is really cool. Um so yeah, we'll go into those but to put context in all of this. Mm-hmm. Luigi got a letter about he won he won us like he won a mansion. So he goes to the mansion 
of course, because why wouldn't you? Yeah. And uh, he sees that it's haunted, and he finds out Mario's been kidnapped, and he's somewhere in the mansion. You find out later that Mario's been turned into a painting. Spoiler alert. Uh, and you have to rescue him, and that's pretty much how it goes. So, and that's pretty much the whole plot. Uh, when you first walk in, though, a ghost scares you, and this guy comes out of nowhere with the, with his vacuum pack and sucks up the ghost, and that's you, you find out that's your friend Egad, mm-hmm. uh, which is a great pun. Uh, I always thought that was a good. I like that name a lot. Yeah, uh, and he gives you the Poltergeist three thousand, which then lets you suck up the ghost, and that's the story. So sorry, that was a little discombobulated. Yeah, you had, you had to throw, but, throw that context in there, but just a little bit of context. So that's why you're hunting these ghosts, and then like you said, Vin. The, the each of the special ghosts that we mentioned before is a p- different puzzle. Yeah. Do you remember any of your favorites? So the the most memorable one, and I think this is the most memorable for most people, would be the baby. Mm-hmm. The the first bo- like yeah. a full boss fight that was not even like a mini boss that was a f- bo- full on boss fight. And it's like so like the throughout the whole game like it's like this whole family you're kind of like sucking up like, yeah throughout the thing like it's like this whole family that I guess used to live in this mansion. And then because like big ass family, there's yeah. 23 ghosts. Well, that, at least I mean, some, 23, people, have big, some people have big families <laughs> <laughs> that all live in the same house. Oh, well, I mean, if you're rich, I guess. <laughs> um, so or really poor, yeah, true. <laughs> either, I mean, that could go either way, really. Um, With how big that house is, I would assume rich yeah. too, though. Um, but like from what I remember, it was like that one, the ballroom. I know I mentioned like mm. the, the ballroom dancers, the, the dog was like a big one. Um, there was a, I, I, was there like one in the shower? There was like a bathroom one. That sounds creepier than it. <laughs> out am, I, of am, context. I, am, am I am I right on that one? <laughs> yeah, though? there is one. There was like there's there, a there's a lady shower right. actually. Yeah, and you have to, which is a little voyeuristic, but okay. But yeah, so so <laughs> it's like so weird. It's I didn't even think about that till now. And I think I think that's the thing. It's like with these, it's like all these family members being stuck in, I guess, like their point in time they're yeah. they're in their room yeah pretty much and then you're you're going in and 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 liberating their their spirit by vacuuming them up and turning them into and a some, painting some of the yeah <laughs> some of the some of the cool ones that i remembered were there's the butler and the way you would get him to he's wandering the halls and you have to get him back to his room mm. so when you do you have this little thing called a horror boy or a horror game boy which egad gives you yeah, the har- yeah and yeah, you yeah. can use it to scan the ghosts to get, see their weaknesses and they give some hint as to what they need so throughout the throughout as you play through the game you're going to get other power ups as well your your poltergeist 3000 can also shoot fire shoot water and shoot ice and they treat that as like a rock paper scissors type of thing Mm -hmm. fire beats ice ice beats water water beats fire um and different ghosts have different power-ups there's sometimes there's ice ghosts so you need to use fire to like melt the ice sometimes there's water ghosts so you need to use ice to freeze that freeze it and then once you do that then you can get their hearts so this butler you actually have to take the fire add-on and light the candle that, like the candelabra that he's holding. Mm. I think that's what that's called. Um, I hope I did that. <laughs> so, right. Uh, but he's, it's a big, like a big candle type of thing. And then you follow him back to his room, and that's where you can finally capture. That's what makes his mm. heart get exposed. Right. There's another guy who's just like this. He's very, he's like eating. So he's such a glutton. Yeah. Like he's just eating constantly. So, what I was having a hard time figuring out what I had to do, and I couldn't quite understand it. What you do is like you actually have to suck up the food on his plate, and then these ghost waiters will come out and refill it. But if you you have to if you suck those up and then take out what's left on the plate, then the then the ghost becomes enraged and now his heart's showing. Ah, uh, okay, yeah, yeah, I, I I vaguely remember that. Yeah, and even in that fight, he starts shooting fireballs at you, and you have to dodge all those fireballs first. And once he tires himself out. And then you can finally start sucking him up. Right. Um, the ballroom dancers, like you mentioned before, were really cool. Uh, it was that one was interesting because there was a bunch of shy guy ghosts dancing in that room. Mm. Those shy guy ghosts were an interesting type of ghost to fight. They weren't a mini boss, but they had masks on and pitchforks, and yeah. you would have to suck off their mask or use the fire to burn it off. And that, and then shine a flashlight on yeah, them to expose they, it. To expose them, yeah, because like the light wouldn't, because of the mask, wouldn't do anything, right? Exactly. There's a lot of like really creative ways that they have you like defeat these ghosts. Whether it's just the regular like ghosts, like the ghost shy guys, or the ones that hang from the ceiling, or the little mini bosses, which I I, I love 
those boss fights. Ooh, another cool one. There's a dude benching. There's a like bench pressing. He's it's a full like gym. He's lifting yeah. weights and stuff. Uh-huh. You have to when you um scan him luigi says something normally you hear something from like the ghost's mind but luigi says oh man i should really go go to the gym i could like hit some bags or something like that and there's a bunch of like one of those like the the, uh, the heavy bags the heavy bags yeah. for boxers yeah so you go up to it and you hit a and he punches it and if you stand in the same spot though it'll swing back and hit you and hurt you yeah but if you get on the right side it'll go into the ghost and hit the ghost right and you have to do that enough times till his heart gets exposed and then you can take him out yeah there's so many cool stuff there's so many cool little things in this yeah i mean and that's like there were like you said there was like 20 something mm-hmm. and then so like each one was a little puzzle and i think that's like it's they disguised like a little puzzle game in in here you know what i mean it's so it's not because it's not like a, it's not like an adventure game. It's not it's not a platformer. It was like its own thing, which I think made it a lot like appealing too. A yeah. lot of fun. Um, but I feel like in the second one, I feel like they took a lot of that out. I feel Did like they? I I want to say I want to say so because I I don't remember those. I don't remember any of the bosses at all from from that game. Hmm. Um, I remember because the objective in that one is you're collecting pieces of the dark moon. Yeah, and. I for the, I remember the dog. There was a dog in there, and I remember that being like the main thing. Like, there's like a little like friendly dog that he uh, he has as like a partner. I'm at, I'm looking at the Dark Moon. Like, I have the I have the game in front of me now. It actually has an instruction manual, which you never see anymore. Yeah, like true. granted, this game is like. That came out like old 2013, yeah. which is weird. But even in 2013, you weren't seeing instruction manuals anymore. Yeah, they started um, phasing a lot of that stuff out just to save paper and all that. Well, stuff. that and a lot of times games now just teach you, like, you don't need the instruction manual because it just teaches you through gameplay. Right. Before, like, old NES games, they didn't know how to do that. They didn't have the game design language yeah. to teach you. So they had to be in the manuals. Yeah. Yeah. Um,. All right, so we talked about the gameplay. We talked about I we covered pretty much everything that I wanted to talk about. Is there anything that you still wanted to talk about about it? I mean, do you want to talk about expectations for the third one? I mean, yeah, I feel like I feel like you that's... might you you have higher expe- you have more expectations than I do because like I hadn't played any Louis. Actually, this is a good time to say this. I've never I never even played a Luigi's Mansion game up until two days ago when I just grinded through this game, which was. So enjoyable. Well, since it's so fresh in your head, like, what do you, what would you like to see in a third one? Like, what was, like, I mean, obviously it's going to look better. And then based off of, like, what we've seen from the trailers, like, we know there's going to be another level of puzzle design with mm-hmm. Gooigi and, and that, type, <laughs> and that type of stuff where, um, but like, so there'll be more like physical trap puzzles, you know, obviously. That actually seems like a, this is a step I would like to see. Cause, like, I, what I would, if I wanted more Luigi's Mansion but different, mm-hmm. I would probably want a similar style where it's a mansion full of ghosts, but the puzzles for those ghosts are different or more complex or mm-hmm. more more different, possibly more complex. So more complex doesn't always mean good. Mm-hmm. Um, and you could also try make like switching it up, like like turning things on its head, where maybe like you would have to use one of the other ghosts to take out one of the other ghosts in some way, shape or form. I have no idea how you would do that, but like, or like what gameplay ideas would, you well, I know they that? have, they, they shown off something in, in the trailers where they have like a slam mechanic mm-hmm. where if you're vacuuming up a ghost and you hit a button, like he like kind of whips the, the, the hose, the vacuum, like, so you know how, like when you're vacuuming, there's like the trail, there's yeah. like the vacuum trail. Um, where it's like sucking down the the ghost, like he kind of whips it and like it slams him against the ground or it slams him like around like like over his head, and that's like a way to like speed up. That's actually something that they I think they added. In. They had something similar in this, but it wasn't it wasn't intuitive. They didn't have like a button for it. Like yeah. you could you just have to hold the 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 joystick in the opposite direction the ghost is trying to move to yeah. like suck them upright. Yeah. Um, if you kind of like rotate it, like kind of swing the joystick around, then it like it'll have these quick bursts of like it'll drop by like three or four at a time instead of one. Yeah, and I think that was something that they they changed in Dark Moon as well. There was like a way to there was like an insta catch type thing where it's like if you got them down to a certain thing and you hit a button, it would insta catch them. It would just like take a big chunk of health and just like catch okay. them right away. 
So it looks like, I mean, with each one, they're trying to improve the catching mechanics because it's such a common thing. Like you do it all the time. And you were saying like some of the mechanics in Luigi's Mansion were a little frustrating. Oh yeah, I, I guess I totally forgot about the final boss stuff, yeah. which is, uh, thank you for reminding me. Yeah, I mean, I thought that the mechanics were good and, and in, a, in a way, like watching you do that final boss did remind me of like sometimes the perspective is a little weird mm-hmm. in trying to aim because I feel like they were so limited with the aiming. It's yes. like it's, it's like either up, down or you pivot like he didn't really have full 360. No, I mean, he kind of did. So every mini boss and boss in the game at that point was designed around the limitations of the camera that they gave you, whether it's due to technical limitations that they didn't they didn't uh, that they couldn't do or the fact that they just didn't know how to do it yet because it was early in the GameCube's life cycle which I would think it's the latter because mm. they clearly were able to figure out like you know look at Wind Waker they yeah. figured out like the full 360 camera for that yeah um but I guess because it's a very tight and confined space type of game that it couldn't necessarily use that type of camera I don't know but the the main issue I had with the final boss is that up until that point, everything in the game was pretty well designed. Like I never, like if I screwed up or if I got hurt, I always knew it was a hundred percent my fault because I didn't account for something. Right. In the third, in the final boss, I was very hard to figure out what you had to do because the mechanics changed a little bit. So you could in early in the game you could like suck up different items and shoot them shoot them back out, mm-hmm. and that's how you beat the final boss. You like, I guess spoiler alert: King Boo is actually Bowser, or no, he's taking over Bowser. He's in like Bowser's form. It's really weird. Yeah. You're still fighting King Boo, and so you like he shoots these mines out, and you have to suck them up and shoot them back at him, but it's not very intuitive because up until that point, whenever there was like a, another item that you could suck up, you could do it from a distance. Yeah. You could like have it like come to you. And this one, you have to be right on it. And so I, the first couple of times before I actually ended up looking up what I need, you're sorry, you helped me. You looked up what we needed to do. Yeah. I would like suck on the mine and it wouldn't do anything. I yeah, was just and, confused. And that was like both of our initial response was like, Oh, well you obviously have to use these, these spiked balls. Um, mm-hmm. To, to combat them but like they didn't give you any visual cue from a distance and that's like maybe like the one thing because like even if it was like supposed to in, in be the intention of like oh well this is too heavy to move in certain games you would get some sort of visual uh feedback where mm-hmm. it's like it maybe like just would just shake a little bit or just yeah. move a little bit implying that it's too heavy to suck up from that far away but, but this one they didn't give you any um and then even with the final but yeah you're right it didn't give you anything and then when you get to the final or so when you do suck it up you have to shoot it at him mm. um and we tried everything else until we had that we tried like luring him over to the mines to have him walk over them he, he has like a sucking up thing to suck luigi up into his mouth um gross and <laughs> and so we tried to lure him over to the mines to get him to suck up the mines and that didn't work either um, kind of like King uh, Dodongo from Zelda. That yeah. was that was like my that was like my second thought was like, oh well, he has to suck the mines up. And we even tried like Mario sixty four style, went around to the back of his tail and tried to spin him, but that yeah. that didn't work either. Um, so, but you have to you you suck the mines up by like being right up next to it, and you can't just shoot it at him right away because it, you have to hit his head. But you can't aim up or down like you do in the rest of the game, yeah. which I'm fine with. Like that's an easy thing to be like figure out like right away. You you know right away when you're trying to do that. So what you have to do is you have to wait for him to like crouch over to breathe fire at you and shoot it right before he does because otherwise it's going to hurt you mm. and him at the same time, which is fine. But you're stunned and then you're useless for a little bit. Once you uh, shoot the mine into his head, it blows the head off, and then King Boo comes out, which you can finally like whittle down his five hundred massive five hundred health bar until yeah. you can finally beat him. So that was my and the the main my main issues with that final boss fight were one about the sucking mechanic where they they showed you something they taught you something new but didn't actually teach you yeah they should have made you do something that you hadn't done at that point in the game they should have given some sort of visual feedback because like even in the mansion like if there's something that you're like sucking on that's too heavy it it'll shake back and forth yeah um and so the fact that they didn't do that with these it is kind of weird that they didn't do that like visual trigger and then the other portion is when you are trying to suck up king boo 
the perspective is very difficult to understand where he is in relation to which direction you're pointing the the vacuum yeah. at. Um, which that's the only time I felt like the limitations of the game engine actually played against me. Like every other time they designed everything so well around the limitations of the game engine. This was the only time where I was kind of like, I, I mean, I was able to get it at towards the end once I kind of like got used to it, but it wasn't intuitive. You had to really like, it is a little focused. It's, down on it, it is a little disorienting because, like, you think that you're under him, but he's like he, his shadow might be slightly behind you, and you can't see his yeah, shadow and, sometimes. Yeah, either. and you can't you can't really tell that way. But but no, um, it was such a good game, man. Like, yeah. I, thank you for coming on. I know, we're not a hundred percent done yet, but it just this was so good. Yeah, it's a great game, and it's like it's definitely a game that like when I played it, it was it was one of those experiences that I was like. Kind of like even like with Wind Waker when everybody was like, oh my God, Wind Waker looks so bad, this, that, and the other. I was like, I, Wind Waker was great. I, I, Wind Waker, I think, was the, I've beaten like three or four, four times. I beat it for the first time actually earlier this year, maybe late last year. And I think like with the GameCube, like it, it a lot of people really railed against it and the games that were out for it, but they were such great, great design games. Like Luigi's Mansion was such a fun game, especially to play like as an adult. Mm-hmm. To really like be able to appreciate like the stuff that was going on, and it's I'm glad that they're continuing the series. I really hope with three, with all the combat um, innovations that they do, it's going to make it an even like more enjoyable experience. Again, my only concern is just like the locales. That's really the only thing I want to worry about. Yeah, is um. I don't know if I'm like really going to be crazy about like these different like themes and stuff like that. I think they might be going away from like the more darker tone and like by doing things like and a, doing something a little bit more lighthearted again, yeah, which is fine, I but mean, it, yeah, like, it, it kind of like separates what Luigi's mansion was meant to be. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, it, I mean, I'm sure the game will play well and I'm sure I'll enjoy it like visually. Like, I mean, if anything, if it looks like Mario Odyssey, it's going to look amazing. I, I mean, love Mario Odyssey. Too. Mario Odyssey looks really good. Um, I don't know. I think it's also cool that they're doing like an eight player multi or mini game thing. Are they? Yeah. Did See, guys... I haven't I haven't seen any of the press oh, for this. So okay, that's yeah. why like this is all new to me. Yeah, so they they announced like uh there's like mini games. There um it's like four on four. It's like four Luigi's versus four Guigis. You have to, <laughs> there's different mini games that you can play. Um some of someone that I was watching on YouTube said that one of the mini games reminded them of something from the um Nintendo Land. Yeah, there is uh, a on, Nintendo Land for the Wii U. On the Wii U, like one of them was a game that was similar to that can- that that was on the Nintendo Land. They thing. did a cool thing. So in the Nintendo Land, uh, in the Luigi's Mansion thing in Nintendo Land, uh, you would have five players. One person would play as Luigi, or sorry, one play one player would be be the ghost. Would yeah. be the ghost, and you would have to hunt down the, and yep. you'd have to hunt down the ghost. And like everyone had flashlights, where the flashlights would steadily drain in battery. So you had to you could either hold on the whole time to be safe, but then you would lose your battery fast. Yeah. And there was excuse me, battery pickups, but it was few. It wasn't frequent enough to be able to spam. So it was like really well balanced. Nintendo Land itself was a weird. I loved Nintendo Land, man. I played it a it lot. It was great. It was, it was such a nice little tech demo for that system as, as an aside. It sucks that the Wii U flops so bad because there was a, once again, kind of like the GameCube, I bet you there's going to be a lot of games that like, there's already a couple that are like beloved classics, like uh, the Super Mario Brothers games, you know, 3D World, yeah. uh, Super Mario Bros. U and Luigi U. Yeah. Um, there's also... Um, there's Donkey Kong. There's Donkey Kong. Oh yeah, Tropical Freeze. Uh, Captain Toad's Treasure Tracker, which is yeah, uh, I know its that, own standoff thing. That's from a, that's a pretty like popular series. I never got into it though. I loved the. I I have not played it. I own it. It's over there. Right. But um, the reason I even got it is because I loved the Captain Toad mini games from the 3D world. Really? Oh, I loved it. It was so okay. fun. So when I saw that, uh, there was a full game devoted to just those like little mini games, like an expanded version of it. Yeah. Uh, I had to get it. Um, what else do I have? For, I don't know. That's not that's not about Luigi's Mansion. But, uh, yeah. The Wii U, I think, is going to turn into the GameCube at some point. I don't think I don't think nearly as as beloved or nearly as good. Yeah, but I I can see it having a similar trajectory where it's complete. It was completely overshadowed in its time, and I will say it was definitely more overshadowed than the GameCube was because at least the GameCube had like those big, huge titles that did come out for that, even when people who were hooked on PlayStation 2 and Xbox, mm-hmm. it's still, you know, Wind Waker, huge game, 
Smash Melee, yeah. huge game. S- Mario Sunshine, the Pikmin series yeah, started exactly. on there. Pikmin started on GameCube. Prime. I mean, there's. I love Metroid Prime, man. Uh, I mean, we got characters like Beautiful Joe because of the GameCube. Mm-hmm. We got um, a lot of RPGs. Um, uh, what was the one that was on the Dreamcast that came over to the GameCube? Skies of Arcadia. Skies of Arcadia Legends. Mm-hmm. Um, there was. I actually have the Dreamcast version somewhere over here. Yeah, I have the I have the fir- I have the one on the GameCube, but that's a great series. There was a lot of great stuff on that, on that. Uh, yeah, what a great series, on on the GameCube, and I think I really I think the Switch is. The Wii U was like a nice stepping stone yeah. to the Switch. It, it was its own worst enemy, too, with its name. But yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, but I'm kind of glad that... I mean, this is terrible to say. I'm kind of glad that it failed. Because I did like the system. Visually, I thought the system was great. I th- everybody was like, oh, it's underpowered. I mean, nah, I mean, it looked good. Power doesn't mean good. Like, yeah. uh, v- like once again... Uh, like we said before, like good game design go- or good, sorry, art design goes a long way. Yeah. That's why if you look, if you go back and you play like old Medal of Honor games, like on the PS2, they don't look very good. Right. But if you go back on the PS2 and play Jack and Daxter or yeah, Sly yeah. Cooper they have a great, they have great or Ratchet styles. and Clank, Absolutely. like you can, they're definitely dated, but it doesn't, it doesn't hurt you to look at yeah, it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so in, in, in regards to that system, like it being, it failing, I think put a lot of emphasis on nintendo really needing to nail the switch and i think they did a great job and i love the switch i think it i'm really glad that we're getting a luigi's mansion for it because i was kind of disappointed with dark dark moon Moon. yeah it was fine but it wasn't like it's not a staple i would say like luigi's mansion the first one is a staple I'm hoping with this new one, it'll be a staple. Of the yeah, Switch. it'll be a staple. Yeah, I mean, because like, think about it. Like Donkey Kong, Donkey Kong, Tropical Freeze. Like that's like a, that's like a staple. Everybody yeah. knows Tropical Freeze. It got ported to the Switch. Yeah, and uh, you know, like I, I, but I didn't play. What was the one that came out on the Wii? The the Wii it was like the Donkey Kong Returns or something like Donkey that. Donkey Kong Country Returns. Yeah. Yeah. It, almost no one really talks about that one, but for some reason it's a tro- pro- it's still popular. Yeah, but like for some reason, I always hear people talk about Tropical Freeze. And, it's a tough game too. Oh, it's, it's a great su- game. It's though. super hard and it has a really good art style. Mm-hmm. And I'm hoping that Nintendo, at least with this one, and they've been on a good streak so far. Mario Nintendo Odyssey in general has is good with their art direction. Mario Odyssey was like a great return to classic mario what people wanted from mario but all at the same time completely revamping it yeah. well i did an episode on it a while ago with yeah. uh, i don't even know if i even talked about it in the episode but the fact that they got rid of lives and just did coins yeah super smart and um breath of the wild being a complete you know reimagining of the zelda series but still felt like zelda yeah and i think you know i think with i'm kind of i i have i have high expectation of three and i think nintendo will deliver Mm-hmm. So that's really what I'm looking forward to. I, I think it's I will, I'll probably pick it up as well, especially now that I've got to experience the original one. It's so good. Yeah. Like if you have not played this game, you, I, I hate the phrase, but what are you waiting for? Because yeah. like it, it, I went in not necessarily a cynic, but I went in with like, all right, I know people like this. I'm sure it'll be fine, but I didn't expect to like it as much as I did. And the ending of it, really simple and sweet, but it was just the game. It was exactly what it needed to me. It didn't need it to be. It didn't overstay. It did not overstay. Oh my fu- fucking a! It did not overstay its welcome. Yeah. There we go. I'm leaving all that in. There you go. <laughs> um, it done. It, it didn't overstay its welcome. It was just this perfect length game. Like I beat it in like six or seven hours. Like it was just such a fun experience. And each like it was something satisfying about being able to clear a room and having all the lights come on. And know like yeah, I got this one done. So when you when you the final thing, and I think they kind of do this on purpose. The last room that you get, the very last key that you need in order to get to the final boss is on the third floor, mm. and the boss is you have to go all the way down to the basement. So it makes you walk through all of your accomplishments mm. as you're going back through the mansion. Mm. You get to see everything that you've done right up until that final zone, which I think is a really cool thing to do. I mean, it might also just be a cool way of like showing you, like, hey, like th- if this room isn't lit up completely or if you're missing a boo or something like that, mm-hmm. it gives you another opportunity to go and do it before you get to the final boss instead yeah. of it being like, 
here's the room, the last room that you light up, and like right next to it's the final boss type thing. Yeah. Um. I mean, it also gives you a time. I mean, like when I was playing the game, it took me a while to get through it because I was just kind of wandering. I just like to get lost in these types of games, like really experience them. Like I did the same thing with Super Mario Sunshine. I would just walk around Delfino Plaza. And stuff like that. Because it's because it, it's not like it's a big world, but it's like rich. If yeah. that makes sense, it yeah. feel if there's a lot of personality baked into every single room in and Luigi's I think, Mansion. I think the more time you spend in these rooms and with games like these, the more time that it kind of just like really sinks in the appreciation that you end up having for it. Uh, yeah. So, um, so I guess to wrap this all up, final thoughts. I mean, I guess we kind of gave our final thoughts. Any last words then <laughs> uh, for, on Luigi's Mansion? It, it is a great game. I think everybody should at least play it that has the opportunity to, it, even if, even if you like you borrow it for someone or, I mean, I'm against emulation, but if that's your only option, if you don't have the money for a GameCube or Luigi's Mansion, cause you said this is going for like a good, uh, it's, it was more on. I don't know why is Amazon that, was selling it for. Is that on price charting? What's it? What's it? What, what is it on price charting? Let's let's take a look at that real quick. Price chart. Yeah, let's look at that video game price chart. That's such a great website. It is. I hate when people like go by that exclusively, but it's such a good ballpark. Like, oh, it's annoying when you go to a flea market and you see like video games at that at that price, yeah. like eBay prices. But um, I what I did you know that they have. And this is like completely off topic. Did you know that? Yeah, yeah. So the video game. So price charting is saying um, twenty nine bucks for yeah Luigi's for Mansion. loose. If you want it complete, thirty seven. Thirty seven. So yeah, new a hundred dollars. Maybe that's what you saw on Amazon. That would make more sense. I was so confused. I was like, why are they selling it for one hundred and thirty nine dollars? What I like about this is that if you have this website up on your desktop, mm-hmm. there's a notification thing. Oh, really? Yeah, you can have it. It'll check eBay, and if you say, I want certain games under the, this price, it'll pop up on, oh. your, on your desktop. I had it up every once in a while just to see, like, because I, I don't really collect as hardcore as I used to because of money. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but I would just see, like, what prices were going for, and that's a good way to try to find deals. And, like, it'll notify you, like, within the last, like, two minutes of price a Price starting. Thing. Sponsor us. Sponsor. <laughs> no. um, but it is a great game. I definitely think everybody should play it. You can pass on Dark Moon, but if you if that's your only option, I think that would be a good one too. I'm still gonna try it just to see what it's like. Definitely try it. I mean, you have. I mean, if you want to like at least get into, and if you want to catch up before three comes out, yeah. Um, I think three is gonna be. I'm hoping three is gonna be fun. I really have high expectations for it. I would. I would be pretty bummed out if it's i'm sure it's gonna be i mean nintendo so far has been hitting like 10 out of 10s on their on their uh first party games on the switch yeah true uh like a lot of a lot of people have been given some pushback with um link's awakening but yeah but oh i think the only pushback is just for the price not necessarily the game yeah which i can understand a little bit yeah but i mean it's i mean this is a whole other thing yeah a lot of people do complain about the price like oh why is it a 60 dollar game it's a g it's an old game boy game but like Everything is redone, but they well, also don't have to do all the the grunt work for all the design aspects. They already they, it's just well, it's the, essentially an art overhaul versus a mechanic overhaul. But I, I think uh, they did change a lot. With no, the mechanics, I mean, right? I mean, I mean, it's it's a I mean, it has to be updated in a new engine, which means all new coding. You know what I mean? I mean, for me, it's more like they don't have to plan out all the oh, bosses. No. They don't yeah. have to plan out the story. They don't have to plan out. But that's probably the characters. I mean, that's a lot of work generally for almost every game. I would imagine that's the cheapest aspect like all the planning phase because like um character design character animation character modeling texturing lighting all that takes time and all that takes tons of people to do like that's usually the more expensive stuff that would make sense and they did they did all new orchestral music for the game so the sound design is completely different I, I, right. I don't know. That's like the one. I mean, grievance. I still, I still bought it. Uh, yeah. I do. I can understand a little bit. I. That's what I was saying. I can understand the argument. It'd be, but not a hundred percent at the same yeah. time. I think the main thing a lot of people are frustrated with is like a lot of games that are like third party games. They don't go down in price on the Switch. Like it could be like you can get like you mean like first party? No, third party games. Like um, I know this was first party, but I think it's like a it's like a, a combination. Like people are just getting frustrated from multiple things. Yeah. Um, like you can get a co- brand new copy of like, 
I, I don't know off the top of my head. I'm just going to spitball right now, but let's say Shovel Knight, right? Yeah. Shovel Knight, maybe you get it off the PlayStation Store for 10 bucks, like the digital version. Yeah. On Switch, it's still like 20 or 30 Yeah. It, and it's weird because it's like, why is the digital version that much more right. on, like, there's no reason for it. So th- that's where a lot of people are like getting blowback on. Now, first party games like brand new games, mm. I'll, that that's different. But when it's like ports of other games, that's where a lot of uh, the blowback I'm from what I from people I've been talking to at least. Yeah, I mean, I can understand some of the games like uh, I guess it's a little different than Link's Awakening because that is a full like remake. like you said it's a re re it's not like a remaster. Like I mean, like with remasters, it's like changing. I call it like a reimagining. Yeah. Um. But yeah, so anyway, Luigi's Mansion. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sorry. Uh, no, we're good. Uh, great game. Definitely go check it out. Mm-hmm. So uh, before we wrap up, Vin, is there any social media or anything you want to plug? No, nah, nothing really associated. <laughs> no. Nothing really associated. Like the stuff that I do, it isn't really um, associated I mean, you can, with it. It doesn't have to be associated nah, with it. that's all right. All right. I appreciate that, though. Um, uh, as usual, you can follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at still loading pod on all of them. Also check out my Patreon, patreon.com slash still loading pod. No, still loading podcast. I have stopped the blog cause it was getting too much work for just me. Um, I, there, it was hard to, it was hard to come up with a blog post every week. Yeah. So. My bad on that. I was trying to come up with some <laughs> stuff. Okay. I did that one article and then I had all these other things, but I've been getting uh, wrapped up with my own well, and, stuff. Uh, no worries, man. It like life gets in the way. Um, but no, the website is still up though. You can read all those blog posts, still loading podcast.com. Um, and also check out the network. I'm a part of Podbeard network, uh, podbeard network.com. Go check all that good stuff out. And uh, shout out to my friend, Erica, um, she is the host of the Apex in the Abyss, excuse me, the Apex in the Abyss, uh, this great true crime podcast. She just started up a new podcast with her friends. She's been, she's taking a hiatus from Apex mainly because it's really depressing having to research uh, serial <laughs> killers. Um, and she's doing a horror movie podcast called Monster Madness Podcast. You can just check it out, Monster Madness on, on any, uh, excuse me, any of your podcatcher devices, podcatcher feeds. So that should be it. So thank you all once again for listening. Vin, thank you for joining me. Thank you for letting me come on and talk about Luigi's Mansion and and, and literally everything Nintendo. I feel like <laughs> I feel like <laughs> we're going to I am having you back for an for a GameCube episode. Like oh, that when would be I, great. When I so I did an N64 episode a, a little uh, last year or yeah. so. Uh, I had my friend Mike on it who literally has every single game on the N64. He has a complete collection. You Real I'm, quick, do you want to know what I just found recently mm, when we were at Too Many Games? What? The, in this game I was hunting for forever. Um, the Legend of Mystical Ninjas, Goemon's Adventure. Okay. That game is so damn hard to find. I had the first one. What's the Go- it for? The N64. N64, okay. The Goemon series is amazing. You should look into that. Have you ever heard of the Goemon series? Uh, for only from the blog post that you wrote. <laughs> <laughs> you should look into the Going On series. It's great. I'll have to check it out. Um, no, but I did had him on for N64, so I will have you back on for GameCube. So oh, I, for sure. I try to find people who are like the most passionate about a specific console because consoles are a little bit more like you have to really know it to be able to talk about it. Like games, you can like know it, you can play and like you can play it before and maybe not remember it too well, but it's easy yeah. to refresh. Consoles is a much more like intensive knowledge type of thing. Yeah, I so. mean, I'm no expert, but I mean, I a lot of my I'm not an expert. Either. A lot of my uh, younger years was GameCube, and then like some Dreamcast stuff, but like GameCube is was definitely what I was playing the most. Well, I will have you back on for that and. As per usual, thank you all once again for listening. Uh, That should do it for this episode. And I don't know what the next one's going to be, but I guess you'll find out when I do. So (laughs) thank you all once again for listening, and I will see you all next time.